the unemployment rate is still too high and the inflation rate too low. Because the economic outlook is uncertain, I can't tell you when normalization will occur. Uh, the timing is, in fact, data dependent, so we'll have to see what unfolds. But whenever such a shift in policy occurs, we need to be mindful that it must be accomplished, uh, that it may be accompanied by some degree of market stress and turbulence. Moreover, the normalization of U.S. monetary policy could create significant challenges for those emerging market economies that have been the recipients of large capital inflows in recent years. So this leads to an important question. What can the Federal Reserve do to address these risks? While the tightening cycles by the Fed can po pose challenges for emerging market economies or EMEs, these need not be disruptive. The combination of stronger U.S. growth, improved EME fundamentals, and effective Fed communications can limit the stresses caused by the onset of tightening. The experience will vary across EMEs, but EMEs as a group today are better equipped to handle the challenges than they were in the past. As always, what I have to say re reflects my own views and not necessarily those of the FOMC or the Federal Reserve System. So first I want to turn briefly to the economic outlook. Uh, despite what w will clearly be a weak performance during the first quarter, I believe that the growth prospects for the U.S. economy over the remainder of 2015 will improve. There were two transitory factors that hurt growth in the first quarter. The winter weather was quite severe in the eastern two-thirds of the United States, and bottlenecks at West Coast ports disrupted both sales and production. Moreover, the fundamental supporting growth still looked good. The household deleveraging process has largely run its course, and imbalances in the housing market have largely been worked off. In addition, federal fiscal consolidation appears to be over for now and employment and spending are again increasing at, state and local, at, at the state and local government level. My outlook for 2015 as a whole is that economic growth will be close to what we've seen over the past two years, supported by continued solid fundamentals and accommodative financial market conditions. If I'm correct then, this would lead to a further reduction in labor market stack, slack, with the unemployment rate approaching 5% by the end of the year. An important underpinning of this outlook is that after a lull in the first quarter, household spending will move back towards the kind of growth that we saw during the second half of 2014, when consumption was growing at more than a 3% annual rate. I, suspect, I suspect such stronger consumer spending will be supported by three factors, healthier household balance sheets, improved household income prospects, and the benefit to purchasing power caused by the earlier declines that we've seen in energy prices.